Welcome to Custom Read. Let's start with story. I found out my wife cheated on me with my son's baseball coach. We have two beautiful kids, ages five and six, and I always thought we had a solid family life. My wife is simply incredible. She's the glue that holds us all together. She's an amazing mom and partner, and I've always cherished every moment with her. It all started when she was showing me something on her phone. A text popped up saying, I love you more. Naturally, I was curious and asked who it was. She told me it was just a coworker she was helping out. I didn't think much of it at the time. That day, we had a big family gathering for our daughter's birthday, and it was such a joyful occasion. After everyone left, my wife sat me down to share something important. I could feel the weight of the moment in the air. She revealed that the I love you more text wasn't from the coworker she had mentioned. Six months ago, when I was struggling and trying to find my way back to myself, she fell in love with someone else. She said it was love I hadn't been giving her in our marriage. She explained, if I have feelings for someone else, maybe I shouldn't be married to you, it's not fair to either of us. She never meant for it to happen, it just did. A friendship had unexpectedly transformed into something deeper. She assured me that they hadn't been intimate, describing their connection as emotional rather than physical. She told me that life is too short to settle for anything less than happiness. While she praised the changes I've made and how great I've become as a dad, it wasn't enough to fill the void she felt. It left me wondering what more I could have done. We've always had a loving relationship, one that others admired. We seem like the last couple anyone would expect to face this kind of crisis. So you can imagine how absolutely devasta. We own a home together and we've built a life that I thought was perfect. Now, I'm blindsided by this revelation of her feelings for someone else and her desire to split. I have no idea how to move forward from here. I've told her she needs to talk to her family about what's happening, so I can do the same with mine. It's her story to share. What weighs heavily on my heart is our kids. We both come from broken homes, and we promised each other that infidelity would never be an option. The thought of them going through a split breaks me. Right now, I feel hollow and broken. She was my everything, and I am so grateful for the decade we spent together. But it feels like the writing is on the wall, and I'm utterly helpless to change it. It's all in her hands now. I feel like I've been torn into a million pieces. Comments. Deleted. Amazing people and mothers don't cheat on their spouse for six months in secret. OP. Heard. Ari Morlock. It's the walkaway wife syndrome. Get a lawyer. Get some therapy. Remember she has been processing this for months. You've had a few days. This is why you need a lawyer. It will help you make better decisions. OP, it just happened last night. I'm still processing. Hijigurito. I feel you brother, but this person is right. Hit a lawyer right now. Emotions will run high, but you need to lay rational and legal groundwork. That all aside, you don't want to be in a relationship with someone who doesn't want to be in a relationship with you. Try to remember that through what comes next. Life will be wonderful when you are with someone who loves you the way you love them. Update 5 months later. She was caught by me catching a text at my daughter's birthday party come in that said, I love you more. When I asked what that was about she said it was a co-worker she's been helping. Because we had all our family and friends there, I didn't push it. Later the next day she came clean and said that she's been in a relationship for 6 months. This was back in October. She refused to tell me who it was with or what they've done. I was devastated. Absolutely destroyed. Still am. So we spent some time apart and she continued her relationship with him. I did some digging in the meantime and looking at the phone records it was our son's coach. I called her out on it and she still continued the relationship. I saw a lawyer and he told me to not leave the house or the kids and either try to work it out or time to leave and to see a therapist. My therapist says she's a narcissist and that I should protect myself, protect my kids and run. Come December, she said she had cut it off with him and wanted to try again. I gave her all the effort in the world, but I don't feel like her soul's been in it. She's not overcompensating, or has even truly apologized for what she's done. I've also gotten access to her photos. I'm the admin on the family Google account, and she doesn't know that I've seen all I have. She framed a picture of him and had it maybe still does, at her desk, I found naked selfies, she sent him that I haven't even received, I found a picture of his naked ass in our beach condo, which I thought was natural space, as we were nothing sharing it during our time apart. I slept on those same sheets. 
I know that she was at a fancy restaurant with someone else, she screenshots all these deep love quotes that I know aren't about me, so much that love's rent free in my head. She has a white bracelet with one black bead that she now wears every day. I've called her out on it. She lied once and said it was from her mom, and up to last week said well my best friend has the matching one. Well, her affair partner wears an all black one eighth one white bead. I know what that represents. Again, she doesn't know I've seen all these things. So now to current day I can't place it find anything that suggests that she's still with him, but I know she used Snapchat often and is secretive with her phone. Whenever I bring up the affair this blow up because I said I'd try to not bring it up and get over it, but I simply can't. I'm not rubbing it in, but it does come up when we argue which is almost every week. We do really well for a bit, up to, and including intimacy, but then something happens, and we go back to shit. She cancelled our babysitter for trivia this past Tuesday, and for this Friday where I got tickets for us to see a show, but she doesn't want to go because I can't get over her affair. Her parents, mom and stepfather, both cheated on their spouses for each other and support my wife and both call and text me that it's unfair that I bring up her affair. The pictures of him life rent free in my head almost constantly. I can't get past what she's done now matter how hard I try. I don't know what to do as she's trying to make me the bad guy and I'm like, I've been here the whole time. I didn't fall in love with someone else. I just don't understand and am an emotional train wreck. Comments. One relationship, 3,159. So you live somewhere that has at fault divorces? If so use the evidence against her, if not still use the evidence to help speed up the divorce. It doesn't sound like she loves you at all just needed you at the moment. They P may have broke it off and you are safety net. It doesn't seem like you will get over this betrayal. So it's time to move on without her. OP, unfortunately no. I'm in MD and my lawyer says the laws just changed. One relationship, 3,159. So you have a lawyer? You started the divorce process? If so have you asked her to leave? OP, I've had consultations. I have not officially started the process, and no I haven't asked her to leave. I don't want to do that to the kids, but maybe I should ask her to. We have the condo just a few minutes away. I haven't left because she's a teacher and has to leave before I get the kids on the bus, then I go to work. I have to be around as her job doesn't allow her to. My lawyer has also stated that this fact would be helpful in custody matters. Update three days later. Welp, long story short, I literally just caught her at the family condo with the AF and have photos and video of his truck, his belongings in the home, and her coming out of the master where he stayed behind a closed door. I also went into our shared car that she drove, and it was left unlocked in the parking garage, with an open high noon on the cup holder and her wallet and belongings still in it. She came home and tried to talk. It was calm conversation but she kept saying it was my fault, and if I communicated with her last night, I gray rocked her rock, maybe she wouldn't have been with him. So I communicated that I will be home later this afternoon slash evening, so she's unexpectedly watching the kids today. I wanted to hang with them as she took them away from me yesterday to go do activities and I would do separate activities today, however I'm not emotionally able to give the kids the best of me right now and I definitely don't want to be around her. I asked if she could sleep in a kid's room and she got upset and stated that our bed is her bed and she will sleep where she wants. I said obviously. I've been for a six-mile walk already and have been calling and leaving VMs at all the lawyers around. I know I can't abandon the home, but I can't be around them, after what I just saw this in. Thank all of you who responded earlier this week and suggested Grey Rock and 180 for me, I implemented them and I guess it drove her to this. But I'm officially divorcing her and there's no going back. Thank you so much, SI crew. Edit and update. Legal counsel told me to no contact her, so that's what I'm doing. She texted me last night, all about how she hasn't asked for a second chance, even though I've given them, and she loves me and she now is willing to do therapy and share her locations and access to her phone and can't see rocking on the porch with at 80. Yada yada. When I got home last night she was in the master so I slept upstairs. This am, no communication. She wouldn't even look at me. Yesterday, when I caught them with video, I saw his hat and it noticed it was a local landscaper. So I called to see if he worked there. He does. Okay thanks, that was it. This NF just called me saying if I want to talk to him here's his number, don't call my boss. I said I have nothing to say to you. He replied, and I have nothing to say to you and hung up. 
Also her mom reached out and said how I must be devastated and she's so sorry and to call her when I have a chance. I'm going to continue my no contact with everyone and let my lawyer, once I secure one, do all the talking. This is so damn hard. Update number two, I'll keep this one short. So she love bombed me, confessed a lot of what she's done, I fell into it for a few days, the sex was great, then we had a tiff last Friday and we've basically been no contact, yet living under the same roof. She got into my Google Photos Act and deleted a lot of the evidence ID collected from her and videos I had, but the important ones were backed up. Literally trying to hide and cover up her affair. I have an appointment with my lawyers this Friday, and we will go from there. I've been running, house shopping and trying to stay distracted. It's very hard. I have a lot of emotions and sadness. I lost my best friend and lover to another. I know I need to keep saying it's her loss, and it will be, but it all still sucks. Especially hearing her tell me all she's done, horrible shit. I don't want to get divorced, but it's what has to happen for my own self-respect and happiness. I can never ever trust her again. Comments. Agile Opportunity 41. Blow up the baseball coach's life. Tell his partner and the league and all the parents of the team. Nobody will want their kids coached by him. OP. My wife is his so. He's divorced because his wife cheated on him. Mongoose loud. So the lesson he learned from being cheated on was to cheat with another man's wife and break up another marriage. OP, right? How absolutely shitty. Kids involved too. Taiwan bandit. But I'm officially divorcing her and there's no going back. It is time, OOP. Your first post about her cheating and telling you she wanted more was five months ago. You have tried to save the marriage while she continues to spend time with him. She shows no remorse and is shifting the blame to make this your fault. Her family supports her because she is spinning the narrative to make this all your fault. They need to know the truth, as does your family and friends. If AP has a wife or so that person needs to know. Your mission in life now is to take care of you yourself so you can be the best father possible for your kids. They need you to be there for them. They will see you are the stable parent and someday realize your wife's affair has impacted their life forever. They will now be sharing time separately with each of their parents. Holidays will never be the same again. Your wife caused this, not you. Don't let her get away with blaming you. Hire a good lawyer and take their advice. Sorry it came to this op, but time to let her go. OP, thank you for following this terrible journey of mine and always sharing your thoughts. We're in the end game now. Update 2.5 months later. Show where to start, well first off I did it. I officially filed for divorce, and she has been served. She has less than two weeks to respond. Quite literally, the hardest decision I've ever had to make, and to be 100% honest, I still don't want to, but I know that it will be what's best for me, my soul, my anxiety and my mind. Over the past month we'd have good days and bad days. Tension was always high, and it turns out she still kept lying about him. I got a hold of her phone again and she had shared locations on Snap with him, and when we were supposedly trying to make it work she wouldn't even share that with me, her husband. And I had asked. Oh and she changed his name in Snapchat, so I wouldn't know it was him, multi-levels of deception. She also had changed his name in her contacts to throw me off, sucks for her I know tech well, and I'm a bit smarter and clever than the average bear. On her birthday we weren't getting along so she chose to go spend time with him in the evening while I hung out without kids didn't tell me, found out by searching her phone for his name. That same day, she had been texting her BFF and literally told her I was being annoying and said, why don't you just divorce me, to her regarding me. In arguments, she'd text me to divorce her, because I would express how I was unhappy and am struggling trusting her, because she's then so shady. Everything from blocking me on Snapchat, because she didn't want to see my snaps was her reason to a crazy phone screen cover, to changing the lock code on our car. Both names are on it, but it's primarily hers. Just really odd shit, and then would also try to love bond me and have me just go along with everything and be a good family man. More recently, on my birthday I made the poor decision to go out with her, absolutely we had a lovely time till something triggered me and her affair came up, and we started arguing. It escalated up to the point where I was recording her on my phone as she was going nuts, and she straight up hit me in the side of my head, knocked my phone to the ground and we tussled over my phone. All recorded. She called the police, no charges pressed, and I was told to sleep upstairs, which I did willingly. The next day she filed a protective order against me and I couldn't reach out to or see the kids or her, which was okay for a week. 
I couldn't even be in my own home. She did have the kids call me every day which was very nice. During that week, my lawyers convinced me the best thing to do, especially for custodial reasons, was to file as it supersedes the restraining order so I did. At the court hearing she was served, and knew it was coming the night before as her friend is an officer and its public record. In front of the judge, she said that I was no threat to her or our children, and that I'm a great father. She also stated that I'm allowed to freely come and go at the house and anywhere else I chose as I'm not a threat and she wants me to see and be with the kids. It's in the transcript, so I'll use that in the custody battle. We will and have talked about 50 slash 50, but it's good to have in case. So the judge basically said that this was all a waste of time, and now, because the restraining order has to be extended till we divorce, it's all null except that I'm not allowed to threaten her. And not like I ever have, or would ever do. I've moved to a family home which has room for me and the kiddos, they have their own room and beds, as well as toys, books and everything else they could possibly need at this home, and we're splitting time with them. She expected me to make the M40 men commute to watch the kids by 730, so she can get to work, but I've made it very clear that if we have them overnight, we take care of the AMs regardless where the kids are. She fought that for a bit, but I showed her I have a penny light order ready to go, and I could just take the main house 50% of the time and displace her, and she calmed down. So that's about it with an update. She's trying to win me back again, but I've now caught her four times going back to him, so I can't give her another chance. I want to, but I know I can't. I can't trust her. It's the hardest thing in the world. I break down crying randomly I and am terrified about the future and how it will all work out, I hate that she chose him over me and tries to win me back, telling me how much this is hurting her and all that jazz and it's like, well maybe you shouldn't have had a fucking year-long affair. An affair that was first discovered by an I love you more text. Maybe you shouldn't have given my engagement slash wedding right back twice. You chose him. A one-time thing I could have recovered from and forgiven, but to go back time after time after time after time and hit it all and did all the things I know she did. Ugh. It's too much. I'm choosing to break up our beautiful little family, and it kills me however, I have to stand up for myself, and I know I could never trust her again. She keeps asking for time to heal, but she keeps going back and getting mad at me for bringing her affair up when we bicker. I can't help myself. That motherfucker lives rent-free in my head all the time, and almost everything reminds me of her infidelity. She chose him over me, and now will suffer the consequences. It just sucks because I'm suffering greatly too. Don't get married folks. I'm sure more will come to me, but I'm just having a hard time and needed to type this all out and get it out of my head. Thanks for reading my wall of text and I appreciate all the support over the past few months. Comments. Massive molecules. Yeah, affairs are amazing when they're just these fantastical detached things with only the fun parts of life associated with them. As soon as they move into regular life relationships with all the ugly everyday things associated with them, their fantasy starts to break down. Oh no, oh, the affair fog is gone, what have I done? OP, yup, shit's getting very real for her, very fast. No roof 1910. Really sorry op, I was you almost two decades ago. My lying cheating wife chose another man, and that's what really got me, I divorced her quickly. Less than three months after she moved to be near him, he dumped her. She came to talk to me about trying to reconcile, and that was a hard no. I'm not saying your wife will try to come back, but the odds are good, so be prepared for that, ahead of time. While going to therapy through my divorce, my therapist brought that up to me. He asked me what I would do if she wanted to come back to me, I was floored. She loved him, she wanted to marry him. In my mind that wasn't possible, until it happened. Now, she really didn't want to be with me, her lover had dumped her now that she was single. She'd been a stay-at-home mom and she went back to teaching elementary school. We had three children all under 10 years old. As much as I still loved her, I knew she would only be using me if I took her back so thanks to my therapist, I was prepared for when she came to me to talk about wanting to reconcile. It was out of character for me, but I honestly laughed when she brought reconciliation up. It's so difficult for you now up, and it will be for a while, the emotional ups and downs. Counseling and working out are your friends in this. Wishing you the best. OP, thank you for sharing. I'm sure she will come back. Hell, she's trying even now. Every day. I've been doing a LOT of running. It's been great. I look great. The best in years I just feel like shit. Thanks again.